Go Sorry again. about that, folks. No, hey. We can hear you better. Go ahead and give us your name and how to spell it. Yeah, so good afternoon again, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. My name is Scott Malin. It's M-E-L-I-N. I'm Todd's attorney, and I'll let him introduce himself. My name is Todd Blitzstein. Last name is B as in boy, L-I, T as in Tom, S, T as in Tom, E-I-N, and I am uh, Peyton's father. So very quickly, uh, Todd's here to talk with you all about his son, uh, to honor Peyton, and uh, talk about what he's going through as a bereaved parent. Uh, we're not here to talk about the investigation, and I won't let him answer questions about that, and we appreciate you uh, not asking. So, uh, Todd, can tell us how you're feeling. And if you all have questions, please. So, as, like any parent in this situation, you know, you're, you're lost, you're, you don't know what you could have done different to have such a different outcome. You want to be there at the scene, you want to be there just before to prevent anything from happening. And the fact is, is that nothing's, nothing's going to change that. So you just hope that, you know, you can get the right information out so that people know who he actually was and what he was all about. So, and Peyton was an unbelievable person. You know, he, he was into the military, loved the military, wanted to be in the Air Force. Um, start off at the, in the Sea Cadets when he was young. Um, loved doing all their missions, going out to Watkins with the Air Force and flying a plane and going up to the, to the mountains and doing their special operations and training with retired Air Force colonels. And, he loved he he loved family he loved you know he loved everything that he was doing he loved he loved the biggest thing was is when it came to grandma and Peyton time he loved staying home and watching Hallmark Channel and Murder She Wrote and all these different different shows and you know I love to battle him back and forth on new school music and old school music he would show me you know, some of the new music, and I say, no, no, this is regular music, this is real music, and then he would, I'd show him, uh, you know, he'd show me rap, I'd show him LL Cool J, he would show me more rap, and I'd show him, like, Vanilla Ice, and he's like, no, Dad, you don't know what you're doing these days, <laughs> so we'd just go back and forth, or, you know, the biggest thing was, is when we'd go somewhere, he'd always want to go somewhere where there's mozzarella sticks, <laughs> loved them, you know, um, we'd send crazy TikToks back and forth with each other, and it, he's just somebody that loved society, loved people, wanted to be around people and be happy. You know, this, this, these events that happened in these last shootings with these kids that um, just went through the whole courts and all that stuff. He was very, very upset by him. He took a lot of, a lot of interest in, you know, the Aubrey, Aubrey case and the other ones because he, he wanted to be involved and he was so against racism and go, so against any kind of negative negativity in the public that he just he wanted to take all sorts of interest in him and see what he can do to change things and you know he loved his he's got a english bulldog that he's like that's my dog that's my dog and of course the dog couldn't sit on him because it's half his weight but um he just he loved everything he was a great kid um i don't know and i don't don't know what happened that night don't know why things went down the way they did but I know with what I've seen, they didn't have to, so. Talk to us about um, this is your boy, correct? This is your young boy, you've only 17. Talk to us about that and, and getting a call like, what, what, what was that like? So, when I, when I went to sleep Wednesday night and, you know, me and Peyton and my parents and his girlfriend Janice and, and my brother, we were all planning to meet up on Thanksgiving Day, and we we're going to do um, dinner and Dutch Blitz and hang out. And, and I remember getting up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom. And when I went to the restroom, I looked at my phone, and it said, in Murphy Creek, where I live, it said, there's a shooting. And I said, oh, okay, whatever. And being the location of the house, there has been that in the past, and the police have come up, and they've asked this question, hey, did you hear anything? Did you see anything? I have cameras on my house and they've asked to see the cameras. And so just as I'm looking at that, my doorbell rang at like 4.30. I said, that's weird. 
doorbell rings. I looked on the, ca the camera. And I was like, okay, it's the police. They just want to see what's going on. When I opened the door, he says, are you Todd or are you Mark? I said, no, I'm Todd. He's like, are you Peyton's? I said, father. And he says, can we come in inside and talk? I said, um, sure. I said, is he in trouble? He's like, well, not really. Um, but we got something that we need to talk to you about. I said, is he all right? And he said, no. And that's what I asked him. And he said, yeah, he's gone. So, you know, and I, of course, you go into defense mode and you want to know what, when, where, why, who. And that's when I wanted to know where my boy was and to get after him. He's, he's my 17-year-old and, you know, he needed me and I wanted to know where he was at. But... They wouldn't give me any information, just said that they did tell me he was at Parker in Venice, but they, it was pointless to come up there because it's now part of a major investigation. And um, I just, you know, everything starts flashing back in your head. Like, what? when was the last time I talked to him? What did I say? How's the conversation? You know, because you never want to be in that situation where you have the last time you saw him was an argument or this last time you saw him, you didn't say, I love you. But and the good thing is, is that wasn't the case. We were joking around. I did say, I love you. And it's, he was only supposed to go out for a half an hour and come back. Um, but I miss, I'm already missing those times of the road trips and the, the debating or, you know, which candy is better. You know, you got Starburst or Snickers or whatever. And those times are gone. <laughs> So <clears throat> when the when I was first notified about everything, of course your mind goes to all sorts of different scenarios and there's so many stories of, out there of what has happened, what hasn't happened. So my impression of what happened was com what just the story I got was completely wrong. So when I did see the video, I wanted to see the video of kind of the base of what happened, but I stopped it at the um, when is actually just after it started. I didn't want to see my boy hit fall on the ground. I didn't want to see, I didn't want to hear the sound. So, um, it was unnecessary. I have my opinions and my thoughts and you no, know, I don't want to hinder any investigation, but I am, I want the truth to come out and whatever the ruling is from the DA's office or the police or whoever, I want the situation to be handled to the fullest extent. There's no, we as a society and with everything that's going on, we need to make sure that when it's to the fullest extent, whoever the perpetrator is or whatever is not out there to do it again. And it prevents other kids from being hurt. We don't need these kids dead. We need them as our future. We need to brought them up, bring them upright so they are, you know, stable and they are happy and they do want to do the right things. And that's exactly what Peyton, Peyton was. He always wanted to do the right thing. Are you hoping to see charges filed in this case? Are you surprised they haven't been? I'm, I'm hoping. Okay. I'm hoping that whatever the ruling is, is they that they that they do it. Like I said, to the fullest extent. If there are charges, then yes. If there's not, then then I need to look at you know how else to handle the situation, such as. You know, talking to Peyton, you know, going through the therapy and figuring out why. So. Who does, uh, who does he leave behind? Who are um, his other family members? Obviously, he had a lot of friends as well. But... He had a lot of friends. I mean, his main, his main uh, people that he was involved with was my mom, Linda, my dad, Mark, um, me, Jeff, his brother, Jacob, his girlfriend, Janice, his best friend, Taco everybody that he was so close to, you know, and that he wanted to spend every amount of his free time with. Two brothers, one brother? One brother. Uh, so his grandmother's Mark, grandfather's, um, sorry, grandmother's Linda, grandfather's Mark, uh, his uncle's Jeff, and Jacob's his brother. Oh, He's 26. So, and everybody in the family's taking it hard. Yeah, they showed up at 4.30 on Thanksgiving. 
And I can tell you that there will never be another Thanksgiving the same. You know, the one previous. You know, there's not gonna, it's not gonna be a good day. I mean, it's gonna be thankful that, you know, we're all here and Peyton is able to be with us wherever we go. And, but it won't be the same. Any questions? Thank you all again for coming down. We appreciate it.